if anyone is heavily concerned with Maxima's graphing functions, they would be pretty disappointed by the plot 2D and plot 3D functions over here. They're pretty limited. I mean, they're not bad for simple stuff, but you can't do a whole lot more with them. Uh, and that's why I thought it would be fitting to have a video specifically on the draw plugin. Uh, and this this draw plugin really expands the capabilities of the Mac the the graphics capabilities of Maxima a whole lot. I like it so much that I use it even when the plot functions would work normally. Uh, it's very versatile, and if the specific type of graph that you're trying to use isn't a native function of the draw package, I'm willing to bet that you could make it that you can make this different kind of function using this different kind of graph using the tools that the draw package gives you. For example, I've designed some types of graphs that I'm using in my graduate research using the draw package. Uh, but I've also done something else, and this is something that you would recognize. Maxima, as far as I know, does not natively graph one-dimensional interval graphs. Like, you know, if you have x, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, sorry, x is less than zero, then you can graph this on a one-dimensional graph like this. As far as I know, Maxima doesn't ever, doesn't have any native drawings for that. Um, and, well, there's a reason for that. Let's be honest, nobody cares about that. Uh, nobody does those. I wouldn't tell my algebra students that, but it's true. Once you get out of an algebra class, nobody ever grasps inequalities like that again. Um, but when I made my lecture for my algebra class on that topic, I really wanted to have computer-generated graphs, so, because cause it's more it's much more clear than handwritten graphs. So I made this plugin just for display purposes. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and load the draw package. Because anything you do with draw, you need to load draw first. So then I do load. I'm, right now, I'm just um, loading the um, the um, plugin that I designed already for inequality graphs. So. Uh, if I wanted to do, I, I hope I remember what the commands were now, less than three, ah, here it is. So this does a graph of the inequality less than three. If I wanted to do less than or equal to three, I would do that. Let's make this always on top. If I wanted to do, um, let's put on lower here. If I wanted to do between uh, say negative 3 and positive 2 between negative 3 and positive 2, between or equal to this is just for display purposes obviously it doesn't solve anything but the point being is that I used the draw package to create these functions and they were um, you know pretty useful it's, they were pretty useful to sh just to show what these graphs would look like. Uh, and if you're interested in graphing with Maxima, I would encourage you to look through the draw section of the manual because I'm I'm certainly not going to be able to cover everything that 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 the draw package does. But I will say that it not only does explicit plots, it does implicit plots, implicit plots. It does points. It does vectors. And but well, the thing I use the most is probably parametric curves. Uh, like let's say or I'll close this for now. Let's say I want to uh, see a spring. The only way, as far as I know, to create a curve in three space is with the parametric function. That's why I use them so much, and that's why I use the draw package so much because the regular plot 3D doesn't do parametric. Well, maybe it does. Well, at any rate, I use it using the draw package. Um, so let's create the parametric function that'll draw a spring. So let's say draw 3D. So x range. Uh, I'm I'm defining the ranges because I think it's really important to define the ranges manually. And in a little bit we're going to do animated graphs, and it's absolutely essential to define ranges manually because otherwise it'll look completely bizarre. Uh, and I usually tinker around with the ranges until I find something that looks right. So for now I'm going to say from negative two to two because this is going to be a spring, it's not even going to go around, it's not going to go outside of uh, negative one to one for the for the x range. And the y, y range is going to be uh, also negative two to two. But the spring part, the z-axis, you, you can't see it, but I'm actually drawing the z-axis with my hands <laughs> just by, just by, um, just naturally, I guess. Um, so the Z range is going to be much more because because it's a spring. The Z range can go above negative one and one. So I'm going to go from zero to fifty.
Oh, whoops, forgot the brackets. So now I want to define the parametric curve that this is going to be. Um, the parametric equations for a spring-looking thing is going to be, uh, I'll see if I can draw it here, x equals cosine of t, oh, let's do it over, a little bit to the left, let's, let's do it here, x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t, and if you mix up the sine and cosine, it would probably have the same effect. And z equals t. And the um, this will work for several different bounds of t, but I'm going to say from 0 to 8 pi. So from 0 to 8. Let's see if I can do a pi using a mouse. Ah, that's not too bad. Um, if you don't believe me that this will create a spring, then take some calculus classes and you will. So, here's the syntax for the parametric plot. The first argument is going to be the x uh, equals part of the argument, so it's going to be this right here. So I'll say cosine of t. The second part is going to be the y part, so we'll say sine of t. And the last part is going to be the z equals part, so t. And um, then we need to declare what our independent variable is going to be, uh, because otherwise Maxima won't know which to use here. Um, and that, obviously, our independent variable is going to be t again. So this is the x equals part. This is the y equals part. This is the z equals part. I don't have much room to say it here. And this is our independent variable. Oh, it didn't look quite right. So this is our independent variable. After that, we put what the bounds are. So then our bounds are from 0 to 8 times pi. Remember, no implicit differentiation. I mean, not differentiation. Uh, no implicit multiplication. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. Uh, oh, first I need to close out the draw part. Uh, and I did something wrong. What did I do wrong here? Um, oh, here we go. There should not be a comma there. OK, so here is our spring. And it looks terrible. Springs aren't that jagged. So why does it look terrible? Well, it's because by default the draw pa the draw package has a pretty low resolution for these graphs. Um, so I I can change that by adding an argument to the draw 3D command. Let's let's make this always on top. Let's also shrink it down so we can. Oops, that's not the right. Um, here we go. I I couldn't remember the hotkey for doing that. So let's go ahead and add the argument. Uh, in ticks equals sounds like a bad word, doesn't it? Equals 100. Uh, and I did something wrong again. Oh, that's not supposed to be in. That's not a list. Okay, so now we have a spring that looks like a spring. You know, it's it's curvy like a spring is. So now we have a a solid spring, but what fun is a spring if it's not springy? So how do we make this an animated graph? We do that with a for loop. To add a time dimension, I use a for loop. To make it constrict and expand, I want to multiply the z equation, so this is this right here, um, by a periodic function. So if I add it by, to so if I multiply this by a periodic function, that means that the z axis is going to expand and contract. And what better periodic function could there be than sine? So you could also use cosine. It'll have the same effect. So I'll say sine of k times t. Um, but what's you know I don't, if I have just sine of k plus t, then it's going to you know sine becomes negative at some point. So it's going to make the entire thing kind of um, it's going to. You, that would make it pass through itself. But I want to make this look sort of realistic. I don't want it to pass through itself. So I'll say instead of sine of k, I'll have sine of k plus 1. 
but even with the sine of k plus 1, at some point this is going to equal 0, so that means this is going to flatten out completely, and in the physical universe that doesn't happen, so I'm going to make it sine of k plus 1.2. And of course, this is meaningless if I don't, uh, if I don't have the for loop before everything, so I'll do 4, k, and let's see, what do I want to do it from? I want to do it from 0 through 20, step 0.01. I want to do this step, and the reason why is because, um, is because um, if we don't say step 0.01, then it's going to go by blazingly fast, because it's going to just be doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through 20. It's going to be really short, and um, it's not going to show us, it's not going to be very clear. So that's why I want to put the step 0.01 in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out and see how it works. All right, we have a digital slinky. And we can kind of see that it's whenever it's at the top, it, it cuts off. It can, you can see that it reaches the edge of the Z range. So let's go ahead and, and increase that to, uh, I'm going to say, 70. There, now we have a slinky that's actually a slinky. It's it's kind of bouncing up and down. There's probably a way to get this to uh, show a slinky going downstairs, but it would take a really long time for me to come up with those equations, so I'm not going to. Uh, now, if you look through the manual, you can find arguments to change the default angle, which is the only way to do that um, with animated graphs. Uh, w while it's animating, you can't do what I'm doing here and, and, and spin it around like this. You have to do that using commands. Uh, it has like rotation vertical and rotation horizontal. Uh, and you can look through the manual to look for that. But what if we want to export to an animated GIF? There is actually a command in Maxima to export to an animated GIF, but I personally haven't had much luck with it. And if I, un if I understand correctly, it doesn't really work in Windows very well. So I do it another way. You might not like this way, but it works pretty well for me. If you add the arguments uh, to the draw um, three, to the to the draw command, and this will work for draw 2D as well, of course. Uh, if you add, let's see, I have this written down, file name equals k and terminal equals p and g and there are other there are other uh, valid i think gif will work and jpeg will work i don't know why but i always gravitate towards p and g um, and this will export it in, instead of showing it in the g and u plot window it will export it it'll export every frame to a p and g in your home folder um, and then at that point you use some some third part some different program to take all of those images and um, and make it into an animated GIF or you can do it in Adobe Premiere to make a video if you if you wanted to well not necessarily Adobe Premiere but any video software I usually just use GIMP um, and the that's that's GIMP it's GNU Image Manipulation Project. It's, it's not one of my favorite programs, but it works. Uh, you, first, you import all the images as layers, then save as a GIF, and it will ask you if you want to make an animated GIF. Now, I want to end this with one more animation, not because it's necessary, but because it's kind of cool. So I, I uh, copied it down here. Let me copy and paste it. Okay, so let, first let me show you what this is. This is K through 2000. I don't know why, but for some reason, instead of doing, whenever I designed this, instead of doing step, I just multiplied everything by 0 .01. Um, so this is basically the same thing as do as like 0 through 20 step 0 .01, I think. But for some reason, I just decided to do it this way. Um, at any rate, this is x times y times sine of k times 0.1 times x times cosine of k times 0.1 times y. Um, and th this is an explicit plot, so this, this would actually work with plot 3D just fine. Um, but at any rate, this was... Um, what this is going to do is you can kind of see that 
as time goes on, is going to get more turbulent because this K is going to keep increasing and make making all of this larger. And this X and Y means that the further it is from the origin, the more turbulent it's going to be. And this sign means is is where the the sine and cosine is what makes it turbulent. It these are periodic um, these are periodic functions, so they're going to sort of wobble and 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 jump up and down a lot. So let's let's um, bring this back into the frame and let's go ahead and take a look and see what that does. Okay, so it starts out pretty calm. So since sine and cosine are periodic functions, we're going to see them zero out at some point. That means the no matter how turbulent it gets, there's going to be another time coming up when the entire plane is going to be flat. And now we can kind of see it's getting more and more turbulent, but up, uh, ah, just saw it zero out there, and we're going to see it again pretty soon. This probably doesn't fascinate anybody else as much as it does me, but I just thought this was a really cool grot, cool plot. So see, it's, and it zeroes out right there. And it's getting more turbulent because time is going on. And even so, no matter how turbulent it gets, it's always going to um, zero out again because that's that's what sine and cosine are going to do. And there it's zeroed out again. And it's still getting even more turbulent. It's it's now at the point where, on the edges here, you can't really even make out what it's supposed to be. But here it's going to become a little bit more calm again before it zeroes out again. there it went again. Alright, that's it. Okay, um, I hope that was exciting. I thought it was. So that concludes the Maxima tutorial. I hope you enjoy the program.